Okay, so now we'll discuss uh, linear time sorting algorithm, which is uh, basically bucket sort, and it is linear, so it should not be comparison based sort. So we'll not compare between the elements. We'll see the value of the element and then we'll put into the bucket. So here we discuss two sorting uh, two bucket sort algorithm. One is counting sort, and then second one is radix sort. Let us start with the counting sort. Okay. So, in the counting sort, the input is we have an array of size n which we need to sort and here and the output will be another array of size n which will be we have to sort in this array and here we have another input which is k, k is the maximum value we are allowing for the element. So, that means, we are assuming all the elements a j they are coming from 1 to k. So, k is the maximum allowable value for this element. So, uh, so suppose we have an array like this 4, 8, 90, 1. So, this is our array of 4 elements, this is our a. Now, k is 90. So, that means, every element are coming from 1 to k. So, that is k. So, we need a extra storage for this algorithm, which is the C array, which is basically, basically bucket. So, extra storage. So, this is the auxiliary array we need to take. So, this is C array we call c is for 1 to k. This is the basically buckets we can say. There are k many buckets depending on the maximum value of the element. Okay. So, now this is our uh, this is the input and we need to sort this a array into b array, but we need to take help of this extra memory or extra storage auxiliary storage. Okay. So, now let us write the code for counting sort. So, we have basically a array size n, this is the input and we want to sort it into b array, which is also size n and we have to have a auxiliary array, which is of which is basically a bucket of size k. Okay, so, this is we'll let us write the pseudocode for counting sort. Okay, so, we will first fill the bucket. So, uh, so for that we need to just uh, put the counter of the in the bucket is 0. So, 0 to k c i is basically 0 and then we need to fill the bucket. So, we will look at the elements if this is a 4 we will put we will throw into the 4 that means, we will increase the counter of the bucket number 4 to indicate that there is a 4. So, what we do here we will just uh, we have a j loop 1 to n. So, a j. So, c of a j is basically c of a j plus 1. So, this is the we are counting the we are just uh, increasing the counter of the bucket. So, suppose we can take an example that will be easier to so, suppose this is our a array we have 5 elements. So, 4 1 3 4 3. So, a 1 a 2 a 3 a 4 a 5 and we have to store this into a b array which is also 1 2 3 4 5 and we have this bucket. So, we are maximum size is 4. So, we have a bucket of size 4 1 2 3 4. So, this is our c array. Now, C array is initialized by 0, 
Now, in this bucket filling what we are doing? We are seeing a 4, we are throwing into 4. So, this is 1. Now, again 1. So, this is 1. This is remain. So, this is 3 is 1. Now, we see another 4. This is 1 plus 1. This is 2. And we see a 3. This is 2. That is it. So, this is the CRA after this. Okay. So, now what we are doing? So, now we can stop if we just the simply bucket sort, because what we can do? If we have this bucket, so what we can do? We can read the bucket. We see there is only 1, 1. So, we can print 1. There is no 2, no need to print 2. There is 2, 3. There is 2, 4. So, we can 4, 4. Sort it. So, why we need to have more code in this algo? Because we need to have another property which is called stability, stable sorting algorithm. We need to, because if among the equivalent stability means the uh, it should preserve the preserve the input ordering among the equal element. So, here there are two 4, this 4 and this 4. So, here we have no way to judge which 4 is coming first. So, stability means we want this 4 should come first than this 4. So, if that is that property is there, then we call the our sorting algorithm is stable sorting algorithm. This we require for satellite data. For satellite data, so, this 4 and this 4 are looks like same, but there may be some little difference. So, we can put some tag over here to, to indicate their difference. So, now after sorting we want this 4 which is coming in the before this 4 in the input order that should come first in the output, but there is I, I, if you just execute this there is no way to see whether this is the 4 over here. So, so, for that stability purpose, we need to have little more coding here. So, that let us do. So, this is for i is equal to 2 to k, this is the cumulating frequency we can say. So, we will just fill up this c, c i is basically c i plus c of i minus 1, I will explain and then we will fill the B array. So, for j is equal to n down to 1, what we do? We do B of, so we want to fill a j, a j in B array. So, what we fill a j? B of C of a j, this a j will put here, B of C of a j and then we will decrease this c of a j by 1 counter c of a j minus 1. Okay. So, this is the pseudocode. So, we can just execute this code. So, now this is our c after this now we want to have a cumulative c. So, this is our basically so, we want to execute this. So, this will be remain 1 and this will be just this plus this. So, 1 and this will be this plus this 3 and this will be this plus this 5. So, now this is the condition of C array 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the condition of C array. Now, we need to fill up this A into the B array. So, this is our B array. Okay, we can have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is our B array. Now, we will execute this j down from here. So, this is our a j, a j is 3. Now, we want to put 3 into this B array, this is our B array. So, for that what we will do? We look at into c of c of 3, c of 3 is basically 3. So, we go to B 3 and we will put it here and we will decrease this by 1, 2, this is by this step. So, what is the meaning of that? Meaning of that is, 
if we again look at if we again get a c that we are going to put in 2 that is the indication in order to get the stability because we are putting in the down way. So, next we have a fourth this is the loop we are executing next we have a fourth. So, we will go to c 4 c 4 is 5. So, we will go to 5 and we will put it here this 4 and we will decrease this by 1 4. So, what is the meaning of this meaning of this is if we again see a 4 then that we are going to put it here. So, that will preserve the stability. So, again we see a 3. So, we go to this now it is 2. So, we will put it here. Now, we see a 1. So, we will go to here. So, it is put it here. Now, we see a 4. So, we will go to here. Now, it is telling us to put it here 4. So, stable. So, for that we need to have this code to get the stability because this 4 is coming before this 4. Okay. So, this is the uh, stable sorting algorithm. Okay. Now, what is the time complexity for this? Time complexity is, so there, there are basically few loops. So, this loop is order of k and this loop is order of n and this loop is again order of k and this loop is basically order of n. So, total time complexity is order of n plus k. Okay. Now, we want this to be linear in n. So, this can be only linear if the k is order of n. Then the time is basically order of n if k is order of n. Suppose, we are dealing with maximum size is say 100 n, 200 n, some d into n then it is order of n. Okay, so, next uh, so this is a linear time sorting algorithm, but provided this size is order of n otherwise k will be dominating. So, next we will discuss another bucket sort algorithm which is called radix sort which is also a linear time sorting algorithm. So, radix sort. So, it is basically a digit by digit sort. And we start with least significant digit to most significant digit. Form least significant digit to most significant digit. And while we are sorting the digit least significant to most while we are sorting each of this digit we will use a uh, auxiliary sorting algorithm which is a stable sorting algorithm. We use a stable sorting algorithm maybe we can use just now we have seen counting sort maybe we can use counting sort while we are applying on the digit. Okay. So, we will take an example and we will see how we can sort it. So, let us take an example suppose we have a number like this. 3 to 9 suppose this is our input we have some numbers in numbers each number is three digits basically these are in decimal so now we this is the least significant digit this is the most uh, this is the second least significant this is the most significant. So, this is in radix sort we will sort by digit by digit. So, we sort these numbers based on this digit and here we will use a stable sorting algorithm we can use the counting sort. So, if you do that then 
we will use we will sort this number based on this digit and we will use 7. So, 0 is the minimum. So, 7 to 0 will come first and then 5 is there. So, 3 5 5 and we have a 6 here. So, 4 3 6 and we have 2 7 here, but since we are using the stable sorting algorithm. So, this 7 will come first 4 5 7 6 5 7 and we have two nines here, but this nine is coming first 3 2 9 and we have 8 3 9. So, this is after sorting uh, in uh, based on the list signal. Now, we will sort it again based on the next significant digit this way. So, 2 is the minimum, so, but there are two two. So, sort stable sorting this will come first than this. 9, then there is only 1 3. So, 4 3 6 and there is how many 5s? 3 5s. So, among this, this is first. So, 3 5 5, 4 5 7, 6 5 7. Okay. So, how many numbers? 1 2 3 4 5 6 7. 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 we are missing. What is that? We have uh, 3 2 3 oh, we have 2 3 so we missed 1 3 ok. So, this 3 will come then 8 3 9 and then we have 3 5. So, 3 5 5 and 4 5 7 and 6 5 7. So, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 ok. So, this is after now we sort based on this digit is the last step. Now, here uh, we have 3 3. So, this 3 come first. So, 3 to 9 then this 3 3 5 5 and any more 3 no. So, we have only 1 4. So, 4 3 6 and then we have no we have 2 4 sorry. So, 4 5 7 and we have 1 6 6 5 7 and we have 7 6 uh, 4 4 2 3 6 uh, yeah so we have 6 then 7 7 2 0 and we have 8 3 9 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 sorted So, this is the execution of the radix sort. So, we will do the this is the sorted array. If you just look at this array, we will look at this number, this is sorted. So, what is the correctness of this code? The correctness is we can prove the correctness by induction. That means, suppose we are assuming that up to this everything is ok, up to ith level, i minus 1 level. Now, we are going to sort this and we have to ensure that this is correct. Now, if there are two different digit, if the all the digits are distinct, then there is no issue. This is going to be sorted. Now, if the two digits are same, like we have two fours, this four and this four. Now, we want to ensure that this four, this four is coming here and this four is coming here, because this is this part is correct up to this. So, this this is less than this. So, if it is less than this, so this four will come before this and here also we are using a count uh, sorting stable sorting algorithm. So, this part will come first than this. So, this is the correctness we can see this by method of induction. Okay. So, now we want to analysis this code the time complexity of this code time for radix sort. Okay. So, for that, so we want to see whether this is a linear time sorting algorithm or not. So, for that analysis, we assume we are dealing with the binary number. So, we have a numbers elements we are converting into binary. So, each element say are L bit binary number. So, this is the first element, second element, we have an array of n element. So, each element are 
n bit binary. So, these are all binary bits. So, we have given number, these are the numbers we convert into binary and we take the maximum size as l bit. Okay. So, now we defined our digit by r bit. So, we choose r is the number of digit, number of bits in each digit. So, that is our r. So, we choose r as the number of bit in each digit. So, what we are doing? We are dividing this into the digit. So, this is first least digit, this is the next like this. So, these are all r bits. Similarly, for each of this. So, these are all r bits, r bits. So, each of this is a digit. So, this is r bit, r bit like this. So, this is the least significant digit of the numbers of the elements. Now, we are sorting this first using the counting sort and then we are sorting again this using counting sort like this we are going. Okay. So, now how many digit are there number of digit? So, what is the number of digit? Number of digit is basically b by r. Yeah, uh, if this is L, we can take this is as a B. B is the number of bits. So, this is basically B by R. So, we have total B bits, we divide these bits into R digit. So, it is B by R is the number of digit and we are sorting each digit using counting sort. So, how much time we are spending there for counting sort? We know it is theta of n plus k. So, k is the maximum value we are allowing for this digit. Now, each digit is r bit. So, what is the maximum value? This is r bit when each are 1. So, this is basically 2 to the power r. So, the total time complexity for radix sort is b by r into n plus 2 to the power r. This is the time complexity for radix sort. Now, the question is how it is coming to be linear order of n. Okay. So, for that we can choose r to be log n if we choose r log n then this is a order of n. So, this will become uh, b n by r where r is order of log n. Okay, but now we want this to be linear. How we can get this linear? Now we choose uh, this. We choose our number from this set one to up to n to the power d minus one, where d is a constant. D could be say hundred or ten, something like that. So our numbers are basically coming from one to n to the power hundred minus one, something like that. So these are the uh, this this is our k the numbers we are allowing the each element are coming from this. Now, this is the maximum size. Now, our elements are b bits element. Now, if it is b bit each so what is the maximum size it is 2 to the power b basically, but we are allowing n to the power d 2 to the power b minus 1. So, n to the power d is equal to 2 to the power b. Okay. So, from that can you get a relationship? So, if we take the log, it is basically b is basically d log n, log n is basically r, so d r. So, basically b by r is equal to d. So, this b by r is basically d. So, this is basically order of d n. Now, d is just a constant, d is say 10, 100 or something. So, this is basically linear time. So, this is linear time sorting algorithm. So, this is basically digit by digit sort. It is starting from least significant digit to the most significant digit and now the original version of, of radix sort was from most significant to least significant. So, we have a array. 
So, we can just sort most if the all numbers are distinct then that will work perfectly, because we if the all the most significant digit are distinct fine. So, that 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 will decide the order of the element most significant digit, but the problem is if some digits are same then we have a problem we, we cannot just because then among that again we have to look at the second level where this most significant bits are same. So, again we have to take care of this part to sort them. So, again among that if the they are also same then next level. So, but we need to have some storage for that every so that is a hassle. So, to overcome that this we will sort it from least to most and correctness we have seen correctness we can do by just the we can see by the induction we assume that everything is ok up to j th level j minus 1 th level in the j th level we have seen it is correct ok thank you.